Hello and welcome. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Carissa Shelton, stress relief for stressed out people. So we're going to give you tangible tools to relieve stress and increase your tolerance for challenge so that you can go out into the world and be the best version of yourself. How does that sound? All right, sounding good. Stress relief for stressed out people. Oh my gosh. Has the is it just me? I don't think it's just me, but the last few years has been a lot. An extra load of stress compiled upon an already stressful environment. So we could just acknowledge that, that it has been stressful. And so now today here, we're going to look at some specific things, learning simple stress relief techniques. And then let's gain awareness on stress multipliers. What does that mean? How does and can stress accumulate? So it's not just the first thing of stubbing the toe, but it's like stubbing the toe, stepping on the Lego, walking into the glass door. It's the accumulation, the phone call you didn't want to receive, the accumulation of stress that eventually leads to burnout. So that chronic stress can lead to burnout. And once we get to burnout, not that it's not reversible, but it's a lot easier to maintain and reduce stress as we go along than to get to that burnout point. And then let's walk away with tangible things that we can do in order to boost our tolerance for challenge. So it's like a cup. If we imagine our consciousness like a container or a cup, where the events of our lives are poured into that cup of our consciousness, when we can expand our tolerance for challenge, then guess what? The stress that comes at us, we're able to handle with more ease and grace. If we compare life to a flowing stream of water, to a current, a flowing current, what a lot of people do is live their lives swimming against the current. Whereas there are specific things that we can do and incorporate daily habits that we can integrate into our lives that allows us to go with the flow, so to speak, to ride the wave, to ride the current as opposed to swimming against it. So let's start first, since we're talking about stress relief, by connecting ourselves with our breath. And I thought that we would start with a quick center and balance meditation center and balance practice before we dive into the causes of stress so we could relax our mind and body and then we'll dive into some of the details so if you're sitting sit up nice and tall and you can also stand if you like gently bend the knees tuck the tailbone and tuck the chin push up on the crown of the head and then close your eyes for a brief moment tuning into the breath, being very conscious of your breath and your body, breathing in. And this time as you exhale, breathing out, set an intention. Hmm. What would you like to receive from our time together? Even imagine yourself like a sponge, ready to receive some valuable information on stress relief, stress reduction, expanding our capacity. And then let's move into a three part smile. The first part of the smile is across the mouth or the lips where the corners of the mouth turn upwards. And then we're going to visualize literally smiling in our eyes, a little twinkle in our eyes. And then imagine a big smiley face across the front of your chest. And then imagine warm, silky smooth oil that starts at the top of the head and flows over the front of the body, flowing and pouring over the forehead, the eyebrows, the eyelids, the nose, the cheeks, the lips cell by cell, tissue by tissue. Imagine, sensor feel this warm oil pouring over the front of the throat and chest, flowing and pouring over the belly, the thighs, 
the knees, the shins, the tops of the feet, the tips of the toes, and then flowing off and pouring down, 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 deep into the ground. Then imagine, sense, or feel a sheath of energy that starts at the top of the head and connects you to the bottom of the feet. Take a moment feeling the front of your body, expand your awareness to what's in front of you. That's it. And then feeling just as much in the back as you did in the front. Imagine this warm oil that starts at the top of the head, this time flows and pours over the back of the head and the base of the skull, over the back of the neck and shoulders, flowing and pouring over the upper back the mid back, the low back. As this warm oil pours over the back of the thighs, the knees, the calves, the heels, the bottom of the feet, and then continuing to flow off down, 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 deep into the ground. Then imagine that sheath of energy from the head to the heels, feeling the back side of your body. Extend your awareness to what's behind you. Then connecting with your higher power, with your inner being, whatever makes you feel comfortable, feeling your connection, and or imagine a spotlight, a cone of light that enters in through the top of the head and illuminates you from the inside out. Just going inwards a little bit more, a little bit deeper, feeling the inside of the skull. Just notice any sensations, feeling the back of the eyeballs, the inside of the nostrils, the tongue, the teeth, feeling into the ear canal and noticing any sounds. As we move our awareness and attention down through the throat and chest, Taking a long, slow inhale, filling the lungs with air, front, back, left, and right. As you exhale, feel yourself relaxing a little bit more, a little bit deeper. Continuing through the visceral cavity, feeling the internal organ system into the pelvis, the pelvic bowl, slightly lifting through the pelvic floor, feeling the spine from the tip of the tail to the top of the head, and then continuing to flow off through the center of the thighs, the knees, the calves, the ankles, the feet and toes, and then flowing off down, 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 deep into the ground. Then imagine you're standing on a sea of liquid energy that comes up to the height of the ankles and imagine roots from the balls of the feet connecting you down, down, down into the center core of the earth. Inhale and imagine golden earth energy coming up the roots, the legs, the thighs into the belly as you breathe in and exhale, releasing any stress or strife. Just imagine those feelings going down, 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 deep into the ground. Inhale, golden earth energy rises up the legs into the belly. And then as you exhale, letting go a little bit more, a little bit deeper. Try that one more time, deep breath, inhale, breathing into the belly. And as you exhale, sensing and feeling better and better. And then when you're ready, gently and slowly, bat the eyelashes open, coming back to that three-part smile. Lips, eyes, big smiley face across the chest. Let's pull down heavens three times, reaching out wide to the side. And exhale, setting the tone. Oh, we already feel better, don't we? Inhale, breathing up. And exhale, breathing down. So taking little pockets of time to feel into the body, the front, the back, the left and right sides, if and when you feel a wave of stress can literally change how you feel.
as we look at what's called stress multipliers. Because like I said in the beginning, it's not the first stressor that causes the burnout. It's the stressor after the stressor after the stressor. And here we can see the cycle of chronic stress. Starts with the stressor. For example, oh, I got a few things in my life. Okay, so for example, we get a phone call from our daughter. It's not really what I wanna hear. Oh, I, I feel that reaction to the stress. So the stressor is the phone call, then there's a reaction. I can viscerally, I feel it in my belly. I can feel my shoulders rise. There's, there's physical things that happen when we are emotionally under stress. What that does is it wears and tears on the body and the organ system, okay? So then as we get that wear and tear on the body, that reduces our optimum level of health. We come back to that analogy of our cells being like a container. Now our cup is more full. Our health optimum levels are now declining, which then increases our sensitivity to stress. So that means that when the next stressor comes, even if it's a mild phone call or it's a mild stressor, my sensitivity is heightened so that then it compiles on top of the, the next, on top of the next. And it's this vicious cycle of multiplying on and on. How many of us can relate to that? It's not the one thing, it's the many things, balancing between work, family, personal relationships, you know, all that stuff, it just adds up and adds up and eventually can lead to burnout. Okay, this is what we want to avoid. We want to avoid reaching burnout because once we have that, you know, we're at that burnout level, then we're not good to anybody. If we think about when we fly or travel, what does the flight attendant tell us? Put your mask on before you help others. So that is why self-care is the best care. Taking care of yourself and acknowledging how you feel so that we can avoid burnout. It's, it's really important. Very, very important. And so when we are dealing with burnout, when we are approaching those levels, there's the three R's. The first is to recognize, to watch out for certain signs and symptoms. One sign could be things that you normally would love to do, yeah, kind of blasé. So the things that would give you passion and purpose previously, there's just no energy left because we've been on that cycle of chronic stress and the stress has multiplied. So we're sleeping more, you might find yourself sleeping more, you might find yourself moving towards certain medications or substances in order to change how you feel. So recognizing and watching out for those signs, that's the first key. And in recovery, right, the first step in the 12 steps is acknowledging the issue. Reverse. So once we recognize wow, I am stressed out. Wow, that really didn't resonate with me. Wow, I stubbed my toe, that hurt. Now we can move towards specific things like that center and balance meditation, like some of the tools that we're going to talk about in order to reverse the stress that we are receiving on a constant basis. And then what that does is it builds our resiliency because our container expands and our tolerance to handle stress can increase. And everybody is like a snowflake. All of us have different capacities and different levels of handling stress. What bothers you might not bother me and what bothers me might not bother you. So we're all individual. And at the same time, when we can incorporate a daily, yes, daily, a regular habit and practice of going inwards, then we can recognize, reverse, and build our resilience Speaking of recognize, here is a quick survey. You know, so there is a survey that has many, many questions. It just took five of the pertinent questions. And if you answer five, five being the most extreme to any of these, then you know that that could be a sign that we're approaching burnout. So any feelings of helplessness or powerlessness, lethargy, exhaustion, chronic fatigue, 
feelings of anxious or excessive worrying. So are you the kind of person that's like constantly in her head? Oh, I'm worried, worried, that future fear fantasy, right? And the mind will do that. So is that something that's been bothering you? Is there loss of interest in intimacy? You know, there is a natural sex drive in adults. And if you're finding yourself just not interested, then that can point to uh, some health issues. And also, have you noticed any changing in drinking habits or medication seeking? So any of these questions, if you're answering four or five on the scale, five being the most extreme and zero being not at all, then we want to start looking at, okay, what are some of the things, the habits, recognizing, and then moving towards reversing, pausing. If there's a habit that's increasing these levels, pausing, reversing, and then moving towards that resilience. And ultimately, people are very resilient. Like if you think about the history of humanity and what we've been through, I mean, even just recently, people are resilient. And at the same time, there are things that we can do to increase our resiliency and to relieve stress so that we can find alignment and access the most best, highest form of ourselves. <laughs> Yeah, one of our friends, one of our good friends and clients, many, many years when he very first came into Morning Crane, it was because his doctor had told him he had, um, what happened was he got into a really bad motorcycle accident and he was under a lot of stress. His doctor told him, Alan, you can either meditate or medicate. And so that is how he found us. So, you know, we all have ways of coping with stress and it's literally, it's not judging good or bad. It's just where, what path do you want to want to take? So there is that option of uh, using substances in order to change how you feel. However, there, that comes with a cost that comes with a cost to our physical body. What happens is just how we are working to boost our tolerance for challenge and increase resilience. When we get hooked on alternate substances for stress relief and changing how we feel, our, our tolerance to that substance or medication increases. So then what happens is you need more of that in order to change how you feel. So that's why a regular mindfulness, and you can call it meditation, you can call it activation, you know, exercise, whatever it is, in order to get out of our heads, because a lot of us are living up here in our heads, and get into our bodies, and to really tune in, that is the key, is how can we tune in to how we are feeling, recognize, so that then we could take steps to reverse. I just put this one in at the last minute. Music is mind medicine. And hopefully when we went through that center and balance practice, you could hear the, the music in the background and notice how it makes you feel. We could do an experiment where we play different kinds of music, right? So things like um, more of like the heavy metal music is going to also add different layers of how you feel versus classical music or meditation music. So spa music, if you will. The music that you listen to affects our mind. And later on in a, in a few slides, we're going to even do a healing sound practice because everything is a vibration in grosser or finer states of aggregation. And so music is a vibration and the chords and the harmonies are set up in a, in a physical way and can create change on how you feel. So if nothing else today, if you are a stressed out person looking for stress relief, here is a reminder. It's kind of obvious, but it's a reminder. It's like, oh, I can put on some gentle, relaxing music. And there's 
tons available anywhere from, you know, Apple Music to YouTube, um, Spotify, you know, all those different kinds of apps. Or if you're old school, I found a bunch of CDs. Um, all those kind of, uh, we have access. The point is we have access to all different kinds of music. And that is a great tool and a resource to reverse the effects of stress. And I just love this picture. She looks so happy here, right? Music is mind medicine. Speaking of medicine, essential oils. When we're talking about stress relief, one of my go-to methods of changing how I feel is the essential oils. So lavender, um, Lavender, if you want to just kind of like tone it down and relax. Also, it's a good bedtime oil. But if you want to like pick it up and energize yourself in the morning, all the citrus oils like orange and lemon, um, the florals like rose and um, gardenia. I have a gardenia oil that's just heavenly. So using the oils which are natural remedies to change how you feel and reverse the stress. You literally take the oil, put a few drops in your hand, rub it together, take a deep breath. Stress is gone. It will literally change your life. So those essential oils are very essential. And there's many different brands. Our favorite is doTERRA, but there's all kinds of things that you can find on the internet. And uh, really just paying attention to what goes in, what we are consuming. If we're watching movies and uh, looking at the screen on social media and seeing violence and stressful situations, well, guess what? There's actually neurons in the eyeballs that then affects how we feel physically inside of our body. So paying attention to what we consume and then allowing for products like essential oils, supplementation of vitamins, you know, vitamin C, vitamin D, those type of supplements in order to fortify our bodies, because really it's easier to maintain our health than it is to have a health crisis and then have to go through those steps. As humans, we always have the ability to change and adapt. And that is the resiliency that we spoke of. And sometimes we need a little bit of help from our friends. So making sure that we communicate what's going on. Speaking of stress relief and stress reduction, there is a practice called shaking the tree, which is kind of a silly practice. But it's also a very powerful and potent practice. Here's a story. I get a phone call from a family member that is just literally, uh, for lack of better words, insane. Okay. Um, and what this person is saying is completely illogical and is not making sense, but is very frustrating because we have a similar interest in the family. So after I hang up the phone, what do I do? I literally go into the other room by myself and try this with me. So think of something that was irritating, something that bo that's bothersome, right? In a recent relationship or circumstance. And then what we do is we literally shake it off. So you start at your fingertips, ripple up and shake it off. <sighs> Yes, do it with me. And again, deep breath in and shake it off. Shake it off, shake and bake. And again, inhale and exhale. Let's try that twice more so you can feel it really good. Inhale, exhale. Shake it off one more time. That's it. And then pull down heavens. I like that pulling down heavens to cool the body and calm the mind. And exhale. So next time your spouse or your children or your boss, wink, wink, uh, irritates you, says something, does something that is not in alignment with your perceived values at that moment, 
what you can do is go into another room and literally shake it off. It will change your vibration. It will allow for you to not forget about the situation, but gain a new perspective and point of view. Mm, a new perspective and point of view. Because when we can refocus and change our perception, then the stressors of daily life don't seem as dramatic. Okay, when we're talking about stress relief for stressed out people, I urge you to take care of yourself by pampering yourself on a regular basis. Because as, as humans, physical touch is actually very important. You can pamper yourself by, say, in this picture, going and getting a massage or some type of treatment like that. But you can also pamper yourself by taking a warm Epsom salt bath. You can pamper yourself before bed massaging your own feet, massaging your hands with gentle lotion. You are pampering yourself by being here right now. Because by being here now, it tells me that you are a person who takes action and wants to improve, recognizes, okay, there is stress in my life, recognizes, okay, there are things that I can do to combat and reverse the effects of the stress in our environment. Making regular time for yourself. A few health education sessions ago, we talked about making our calendar, taking time and making a calendar and scheduling regular time for exercise, scheduling re regular time for body work on a daily basis, making sure that you're practicing proper hygiene because practicing proper hygiene is another way of pampering yourself and uh, letting your cells and tissues know that you're worth it, that I want to present myself in a clean manner. Taking that time, that's the key is taking the time. And for those of us who say, I don't have time to meditate, I don't have time to exercise, I'm too busy, then guess what? Then that means that you can benefit from taking more time. <laughs> so taking time, scheduling it in and not allowing others to infiltrate on your self-care. Self-care is the best care. But when we're talking about stress relief and if we're stuck inside all day, every day behind the computer, well, that's not natural. Our bodies mm, aren't built for that. Our minds aren't built to look at a screen all day, every day. And how can we reverse that? By getting out in nature. Oh, and literally connecting with all the beauty. There's definitely opportunities to get outside, to connect with nature. I know when it's cold outside, layer up, get out there, breathe in that air that comes. Okay, there is a, it's called symbiotic. Symbiotic relationship between us and trees. Because as humans, we breathe out carbon dioxide and we breathe in oxygen. Well, guess what? The trees do the reverse. The trees take in the CO2 and emit oxygen. So there's this interconnection and this relationship that we have physically in our bodies with nature and with trees. And if you're inside too much, then that's going to stress the system. So make it a priority. Make yourself a priority. That is the key for today. Your biggest takeaway from today is I'm going to make myself a priority so I can lower my stress levels and be the best self that I can possibly be. Because when you do that, then everything else falls into place. Then the relationships improve at home, at work, the finances, find a stable level, our health ailments go away. We just feel better all around. And it's, it is subjective when we say, oh, feel better and maybe slightly antidotal. And at the same time, I'm living it. 
am living proof that this is possible because a lot of people, they look at uh, myself and my husband, we have a uh, integrated medicine practice. We do meditation, Qigong practices every day, pretty much. It's, and it's super fun and very fulfilling. I love my life. I love our job, but a lot of people think that because of what we do, we don't have stress. And that is not true. <laughs> we have to co exist in this environment just like everyone else and we have family issues quite a bit of family issues i won't bore you with our our drama but you know there's there's things definitely coming at running a business maintaining working relationships those can be the, some of the biggest stressors and at the same time i am so thankful and grateful to have these tools, to have these practices in order to recognize when I'm feeling ah, scattered and out of alignment and stressed out. I can tell because I'll be a lot moodier and very short and ir I get kind of irritated or irritable. I can go outside, go on a walk, walk around a little bit, change how I feel and come back. Sometimes we just need a little bit of space too. And another very strong technique is to journal, journal on a regular basis. One journal practice is just before bed, you will write down the magic I witnessed today or three great things that happened today. So that would be your sleepy time journal. And every day you recognize here is the magic and the goodness that I attracted to me. And guess what? What we focus on expands. What you think about, you bring about. So when you acknowledge, oh, this was super cool, or oh my gosh, that was so great. Even little things, those things are worth being acknowledged. And uh, what a lot of us do, and the reason is because the way that the mind is wired is that we are problem oriented, focusing on the problem, focusing on the issues, focusing on what's wrong. That's because the brain is a problem solving tool. So we could have, say, in the comments section, 10 comments, nine of them are super positive and exciting. One of them is talking smack and negative. And guess what? Most people are going to focus on that one negative comment. Whereas we have all these positive things going on over here. So that's what this journaling technique does is that it says, oh my gosh, look at all these really great things that happened today. And on a daily basis, keeping track of that. It's, it's a game changer. I started doing this during COVID and it literally, I think it might've saved my life because I was... Yeah, it was a rough time over the last year, very stressful. So that these are literally things that that I used in order to reduce the stress and to to be here with you talking with you today. Another really cool practice is the healing sounds for changing how you feel. So I won't go too far down the rabbit hole, but we did talk about a few slides ago about how music is medicine for the mind. And that's because of the vibration that the sound, the sound gives, the music gives. Now in Qigong and also in yoga, um, there's different sounds that we can actually make in order to change how we feel. So in Qigong, they have the six healing sounds. Each sound connects back to one of the major yin organs. The heart, which is what we're going to do and focus on today, the heart is said to be the emperor, empress of the body. So the heart takes the brunt of the emotions and then disperses it throughout the body. And each of the organs has a different emotion. The heart is abandonment, loneliness, lack of joy, for example. The kidneys house fear the lungs house sadness, the spleen and stomach worry, the liver anger, frustration, and resentment. But the heart is the emperor. If anyone's had a broken heart, then you, you know how bad that feels. Here's a tool called the heart healing sound 
in order to boost and tonify and repair our hearts. The sound is ha, like you're laughing, like ha, 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 ha. And so what we're going to do is bring our hands to our hearts and just take a few breaths into your big, beautiful heart. Feel into the heart for a moment. And then prepare the breath. So take a nice deep breath in. Give an open mouth exhale. Then we're going to chant out loud the ha sound three times, then three times in a whisper, and then three times silently in the mind's ear. Okay, ready? Adding the sound. Ah. Uh... And again. Uh... One more time out loud. Uh... To the sound in a whisper. Then thirdly, try the sound silently in the mind's ear. Hear the sound as if we're all in the same space together. Then feel the tip of your tongue to the roof of the mouth. Flutter the eyes open. Nice big smile. Pull it down three times and exhale. Notice how that changed how you feel? That's a very powerful and potent technique. And you don't even have to do it out loud. So doing it in a whisper or silently can produce major effects and major positive benefits. That sound of ha, ah, even ha. Ah, and we naturally do do that. Ooh, it gets you nice and relaxed and zenned out there. So that healing sound is a very powerful practice. If you liked that little tidbit, we have lots of videos on our YouTube channel that goes through the healing sounds in more depth. So now I'd like to ask you, how do you feel? Are we feeling more relaxed, more at ease? Can we say that we received some techniques that we can now take out into our life and incorporate right away in order to reduce stress and boost our tolerance for challenge, avoiding burnout? And or if we've gotten to the burnout point, now we can start unraveling a little bit more a little bit more. Just little baby steps each day goes a very, very long way. So today we gave some very, very powerful techniques. We did the healing sound. We talked about um, essential oils. I gave you the practice shaking the tree. We did the uh, center and balance meditation. We talked about how music is medicine for the mind. We looked at burnout. What is burnout and what are some of the signs and symptoms to look out for? And then how can we start to unravel and reverse that? Type in, type in the chat how you're feeling right now and what is one of the specific takeaway from today that you're going to do today or tomorrow sometime this week? What is one or two of your biggest takeaways that you're going to incorporate into your day? Oh, thank you. Jennifer just gave me a little heart that made my heart sing. <laughs> okay. I see Pam. Thank you. Pam says feeling very relaxed. Will practice the heart sound. Yes. That's so great. And Farah said, I'm feeling better. Oh, I'm so glad you're feeling better. Yeah. These are I'm literally game changing, life changing practices and tools. So it's so exciting and cutting edge. I don't know why more people don't do it.
I mean, I have some ideas, but it's literally so simple and so easy to do that it's almost like, wow, why is that so easy to do? It's finding that consistency in the, the discipline to incorporate the regular practice. Thank you so much for your time and your energy. It really means a lot to us to have you show up because that's everything. Your time is everything. So thank you so much. I'm wishing you a relaxing and easeful rest of your day and week. Can you believe it? We're already into March. Thank you so much. Take good care.